church. <laughs> Welcome to worship on this, the day of Pentecost, the day when we recognize that uh, 2,000 years ago, the Holy Spirit descended from the Father and landed on the shoulders of the gathered from all over, as you just saw in the video, and declared that you are the church. You are the church. And today, we celebrate that. I want to welcome those of you who are visiting with us this morning for the first time. I know there's a few of, of you here. Um, please make sure, if you haven't already, to uh, let us know of your presence on the guest register out there. And um, if I'm uh, able to, I'd like to meet you after the service and um, give you the opportunity to uh, ask me any questions about this place that you'd like. Uh, as I've said to many visitors in the past, it's pretty tough when you're church shopping to walk into a place and sit for an hour and try to gauge the full tenor and tone and uh, caliber of a ministry. But the way to really find out about a church is to talk to the pastor. He'd love to give you the opportunity to know more fully what this place is all about. Uh, for those of you who are new and this is your first time here, you have stumbled upon a treasure, I'm telling you. <laughs> this place is something else. Not because of me, not because of the building, but the people that are sitting around you. This is the most welcoming, friendly place I've ever been. So, um, we look forward to engaging with you and answering your questions and making you feel especially welcome in this place. As I said last week, the uh, CDC guidelines have been relaxed in, in many areas uh, of our culture. Uh, we as a uh, leadership team at Rock of Ages will be meeting this Wednesday to discuss uh, how that impacts us. And I fully expect that we will have some new um, protocols that we'll discuss and uh, make available to you next week. Uh, we're moving in the right direction. Um, for those of you who have been taking advantage of the fact that for the last two weeks we've set tables up outside after worship for a time of fellowship, and that seems to have been well received. We'll do it again today. So take advantage of that uh, if you'd like. Um, I'd also like to uh, let you know that uh, we will be uh, scheduling another prospective new member class sometime over the next several weeks as uh, I begin to hear people say, we'd like to know more. We'd like to potentially uh, become a member of this church. If that describes you, then there is a clipboard out there. All we need is your name on it to let me know that you're interested. Uh, so that we can get that class uh, formed up and scheduled. Just a reminder again of our uh, support of the refuge at Jumper Creek, the transitional uh, housing ministry in Bushnell that uh, you all have generously been providing non-perishable food items and paper goods and toiletries. Uh, the table out there, that's what all of that stuff is. Um, they will be holding, uh, I guess you would call it kind of an open house on June the 19th down in uh, Bushnell. What's that? The 18th. 18th. Right. Yeah, if you went the 19th, you'd miss it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so on the 18th, and, and they have a whole host of activities planned down there, including music and food, um, time of worship, etc. And it's a wonderful opportunity to see that facility and the work that they do. Uh, we're, we're pleased to be able to support them, and um, they're doing wonderful work down there. So, uh, again, thank you for uh, attending worship this morning. Let's begin this morning by sharing a, an expression of God's peace, one to the other.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins before God and before one another. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, and all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves to the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, now and in our own. Thank you. is rich in mercy, has loved us even though we have been dead in sin. And he's made us alive together in Jesus Christ. By grace, we have been saved by the power and the name of Jesus Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit. In his name, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. 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 Our gathering hymn today is Spirit of Gentleness.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Speaking about God's deeds of power. 
All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters will prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from Romans. By pouring out the Holy Spirit into our hearts, God gives us the promised first fruit of eternal life, so that we await God's future in hope. In the meantime, the Spirit also intercedes for us by carrying the prayers of our weak human hearts to God. Chapter 8, 22 verses, excuse me, chapter 8, verses 22 through 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope it is seen is not hope for who hopes for what is seen but if we hope for what we do not see we wait for it with patience likewise the spirit helps us in our weakness for we do not know how to pray as we ought but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words and God who searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand, if able, for the reading of the Gospel. comes to us from the Gospel of John in the 15th chapter. <clears throat> now my message is not going to be on this text. It's going to be actually on the Acts text. But uh, the reading begins um, at the uh, 26th verse. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father will testify on my behalf. You also <clears throat> are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will <clears throat> prove the world wrong about sin and <clears throat> righteousness and judgment about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. 
All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Change. It's our favorite word, isn't it? We love change. I've got a little story that I think kind of captures uh, how hard change is. You see, there was this man who, who had a parrot, and this parrot was very foul-mouthed. He constantly would insult the owner and other people that was, were around. And so the owner decided he would punish this parrot. And so he put him in a dark room by himself. The parrot didn't like that at all and said, I'll change, I'll change. And he brought him back in among other people. But he continued to curse and to insult other people. And the owner was even more enraged. And so now he decided that he would physically punish him. And so he kind of grabbed him and shook him. And the parrot said, no, 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 I will change. I won't do it anymore. I won't do it anymore. And it didn't take very long before he started to do it again. And the exasperated owner decided that he would really exact some punishment on this parrot. And so he put him in the freezer, <laughs> closed the door. And in there, he's dark and he's cold, panicked. He starts pecking on the door really hard. The owner opens the door and takes him out. And he says, I'll, I'll never do it again. I promise you, I will change. I will not insult anyone anymore. But I've got a question for you. What did the chicken do? <laughs> that cute little story uh, talks about how hard it is for us to change our behavior, our habits, our, uh, our, our interactions with other people. Um, the uh, story of change that I just uh, shared with you I think accurately depicts uh, what it is like for us as we continue to get a little older in our lives. It becomes even more and more difficult to change. I mean, I'm proof of that. Um, I've been a, a pretty progressive uh, uh, person when it comes to technology, but we have had uh, our patience uh, challenged big time here as we have tried to figure out how to advance our abilities to share the word using uh, sophisticated means. Today, for the first time, we are streaming this service live. Um, we have no idea how many people are watching it. It'll still be recorded and we'll still put it up in Facebook and YouTube. But the process by which we have had to uh, go through to learn how to do all this has been exasperating, leaving me saying, you know what, I just as soon not have to do all of this. Why do we have to change all the time? Uh, I get it. I get how hard change is for us. It's a great paradox. We, we don't want certain things to change. Like, we, we, we don't want to have our evening news changed. We, we don't want to have our church change. We, we don't want to have a different liturgy. We don't want to have to sing songs we've never heard before. It's exasperating to us. It makes us uncomfortable. But there are things that we do want to change. We want to lose weight, right? We want to be smaller. We, we want to get rid of these um, COVID-19 restrictions. We want that to change. We certainly want our bank accounts to change, don't we? We want them to, be, to grow. We want them to be better. We don't want that to stay the same. Well, changes are inevitable. You know, you can look at a mountain and think that it is forever, but it's undergoing change as you look at it. You just can't perceive it. God created us to be in a constant, state of change. Some for the better, some for the worse. God is interested in us changing, not just in physical uh, manifestations, but he's interested in us changing our hearts, 
changing how we view our fellow human beings, changing the circumstances with which people are suffering today, changing the circumstances of war and hunger and disease and so on and so forth. Well, Pentecost had two meanings originally. Uh, originally, it meant uh, it was a feast of the harvest. There were three major feasts that the Jews experienced every year. And uh, one of those was um, the, the, the Feast of Tabernacles. Another was the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, and uh, it was originally the Feast of the Harvest. People would gather on Pentecost to celebrate the harvest. Um, when Jesus gathered the people at this particular Pentecost, it was an extraordinary experience. As the little film clip indicated, people would gather from all over the area. They didn't speak the same language. But when the Holy Spirit descended upon them, they all were able to hear in their own language. The first thing that changed at Pentecost was the disciples. The disciples themselves had been a little tentative about this unbelievable story of a Messiah coming in the form of a carpenter. Yeah, they said they believed it, but yeah, there's just a little bit of doubt left in there. But at Pentecost, when the flames of the Holy Spirit touched them, it changed them. It changed them permanently. The second change that occurred at Pentecost were there were thousands of people gathered around, and as the text tells us, people were baptized. They became believers. Some 3,000 people became believers. Well, our world needs change today. It needs a lot of change. And we feel helpless as to making that change a possibility. You've heard me say countless times that there is no powerful entity that can effect change in the world like the church. And again, I've said no government, no military, no academic institution can change the world with as much permanence and effectiveness as the church. Now we hear a counter message, don't we, today? We hear a message that the church has diminished in its uh, message and in its power and in its, in its relevance. But the church is you and I, and the impact that you and I have on individuals' ability to change their own lives is infinite. We have the power to help people change the way they live their lives. I've seen it over and over again in subtle ways and sometimes in, in pretty dramatic ways. The Holy Spirit is constantly changing the church. This uh, next image that I want to show you um, is me over in the jungles of Indonesia uh, at a village called Ambon. And just a couple of decades prior to this picture being taken, the residents of this village, remote, extremely remote, took an hour and a half to fly by mission aircraft to get to this location. They had been cannibals, but today they are fully believers in Jesus Christ. And they have a church, and they've baptized their children, and they are teaching them the lessons of the Bible. So, this change that I'm talking about at Pentecost is all about transforming the world. And the transformation that is possible through the gospel of Jesus Christ is like no other transformation that can occur. I, people have told me you should write a book sometime about all the experiences you've had that have witnessed to the transformation of people's lives as a result of faith coming in to their lives. Well, um, maybe one day I, I will. But until then, you get to hear my stories from time to time. So um, I, I'm 
grateful for the experiences I've had. I'm grateful for the opportunity to uh, share what has been real in my life with regard to change. And I also encourage you to say, don't resist change. Accept it. Embrace it. It can be a good thing. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we go to God in prayer. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming, that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Lord, in your mercy. God of light, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of the nations with your Holy Spirit so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of the people. Lord, in your mercy. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in need this day. Especially we pray for George Rio, 
D, Bob, Art, Elaine, Sandy, all the others on our prayer list found on our website. And those we name out loud are in our hearts. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, God of love, fill this rock of ages with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, move us to give generously to those in need around us like Jumper Creek and Bless Wildwood, and to support missionaries like the bishops. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, guide the leaders of Israel and Palestine to bring much needed peace to this very troubled area. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope, those who have died in you raise their eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Lord, in your mercy. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. At this time, when we would usually receive the offering, I would like to thank you for your generous and continued support of our programs here at Rock of Ages. We look forward to expanding those programs in the near future with the promise of more people getting out and getting vaccinated. If you have any questions about the electronic giving, you can always contact the church office. Again, thank you for your continued support.
And we remember that it was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread and broke it. And he gave thanks and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for his disciples to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sin for all people. Do this forever and always, and share it with everyone. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. sacrifice that was made on our behalf, the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. As you come forward for this meal, remember that you are indeed beloved unconditionally. Communion in this place, for those of you who are visiting for the first time, is open. Everyone is welcome at this table. You'll be invited to come forward by an usher, section by section. There's a table in front of you. You will be given a wafer, and you will then proceed down the table to take either uh, a light-colored uh, juice or wine, come to the end of the table, consume both, and then return to your place by the outside aisle. All is ready. Please come. <laughs>
please stand if you're able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you've now received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. 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 Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Before we go, let me say thank you again to those of you who have chosen to worship with us for the first time. We hope this has been a blessed time for you. And we encourage you to linger afterwards at the tables outside to maybe meet some of the other folks. And uh, <clears throat> again, like I said, um, don't be afraid of change because change is upon us. Although we would like to return to exactly the way we were doing things before, we're just not going to be able to do that. So um, be open to change because it can be a glorious and exciting thing to experience in our Father's name. Now hear these words as we depart. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing song today is, Come Thou Almighty King. to see it.